We're reading from St. Luke chapter 13, verse 6 to 9. St. Luke chapter 13, verse 6 to 9. And we're, we're going to read from NLT version of the Bible today. St. Luke chapter 13, 6 to 9, NLT version. Then Jesus told this story. A man planted a fig tree in his garden and came again and again to see if there was any fruit on it. But he was always disappointed. May your disappointment be terminated today. Now, if your amen can connect what I'm saying, your miracle will be sure. May your disappointment be terminated today. Finally, he said to his gardener, I've waited three years and there hasn't been a single fig. Cut it down. It's just taking up space in the garden. I pray for somebody here. You will not be a waste of space. The gardener answered, Sir, give it one more chance. Leave it another year. And I'll give it special attention and plenty of fertilizer. And if you get fixed next year, fine. If not, then you can cut it down. I want to challenge somebody today. Don't give up on the project you have started. It may look slow. It may look daunting as if it's unproductive. Hear the voice of the Lord. There can be some digging around. And as you dig, God will give you a new beginning. So today, at the second part of that, of that teaching, I want to talk on, I want to title this one on giving it special attention. Giving it special attention. All right? We're digging around again, but today we are, com we are focusing on giving it special attention. When you have done all you know to do, when you are doing your best, putting in all your effort, and things seem not to be working, you must have to give it special attention. The gardener said, let's dig around a bit. Maybe if we give it special attention, there may be productivity. Spirit of the living God, we ask that you bless these words right now in Jesus' name. Let my tongue be used as the pen of a ready writer to inscribe upon the ass of men that we they need to hear. It's all about you, O oh God, and none of us. In Jesus' name we pray. So, so then, it's about digging around, giving it special attention. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever things are not working, let's remember it cannot be God. Why? God is ever faithful. God is ever true to his word. Psalm 119 verse 89, forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, he is the Lord God of Jacob. He does not change. So God doesn't change. What he has said in the past is what he's saying now. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thought I think towards you. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a hope and a future. I want you to understand that in the mind of God, your future is secured. In the mind of God, your future is certain. When things go wrong and are not working, it's critical that we dig around. Give you special attention. Why is it so? Why is it so? I remember a woman in the Bible. Her name was called Rachel, who was going to give birth to children for the first time. No, forgive me, Rebecca, who hadn't had a child for a while. And when she was pregnant, after the other that prayed pray for her, the Bible says there was trouble in her tummy. And she told the husband, why am I like this? The husband said, but we asked for babies. And she said in King James, if it be so, why am I thus? If this is God, why am I feeling like this? Then the prophet said, two nations are in your womb. And they are fighting for supremacy. Beloved, whenever it's not working, it cannot be God. Last week I gave us three points and I'm going to build on it today in the name of Jesus. In Luke chapter 18, Luke chapter 18, verse 18 to 23, the Bible says, A certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear with false witness, honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, all these have I kept, all these have I kept from my youth up. In other words, I've done everything I'm supposed to be doing. Then when Jesus asked these things, he said unto him, yet lackest thou one thing. In other words, though you seem to be getting it right, 99 over 100, but there is one point you are missing. Today I pray, whatever point that is lacking your life, that you are missing why things are not getting resolved, may the Lord reveal to you in Jesus' name. 
Jesus said, we lack only one thing. In other words, if men were to give ma that man assessment, everybody would clap for him. They will say, wow, he's the best. But in the sight of Jesus, he lacked one thing. And that one thing that made him not to get result, made him not to be at peace with himself. He felt something was wrong. Something was missing. I should not be like this. Today I pray, whatever is missing in your life, my brother and my sister, may the Lord reveal to you in Jesus' name. Jesus told him, now go sell all you have, distribute to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And the Bible said, when he had this, he was very sorrowful. That was his albatross. His mind was in his riches. And he couldn't go forward a little bit more. Somebody shout me and say, Lord, reveal unto me what I lack. You are not saying it confused. Say, Lord, reveal unto me what I lack. So last week, I spoke to you about three things that may be missing. Number one, lack of focus. Number two, dishonoring parents. Number three, not working in forgiveness. Is that correct? So today, let's build on it. What are the things that may have not have made it work? Lack of diligence. Number four point is lack of what? Diligence. Or hard work. In Proverbs 13 verse 11. Proverbs 13 verse 11 says, Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished. But he that gathereth by labor shall increase. He that gathereth by diligence shall increase. Beloved, our God, the Father, was introduced to us as a diligent, hard-working personality. How do I know that? The account of creation, Genesis chapter 1, told us that our God was a hard-working God. I mean, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, we are told he created the heavens and the earth. An undiligent, non-hard-working person cannot create. It takes a hard-working person to create something. That's why, beloved brother and sister, don't be quick to knock what people are doing. Don't be quick to criticize. Why? You don't know what it takes to give birth to what they have. God was a hardworking God. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2, if you read verse 2 to 7, he walked and he saw everything that he had made was very good. From today, I pray, the anointing for diligence, let it rest on you also. In fact, God worked so hard that on the seventh day, he rested. You see, you don't have right to rest until you have worked hard. Many rest more than they work. What a tragedy. And scripture says, he that does not work should not eat. Diligence. God is a worker. In John chapter 9 verse 4, Jesus also came to tell us, I'm a worker. I am diligent. In John 9 4, he says, I must work the works of him that sent me. Come on now. He says, the night is coming when no man can walk. Verse 5 says, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Are you getting this? Jesus too was saying, oh, the Holy Ghost is a worker. Holy Ghost in you is also working on a daily basis. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be, you shall begin to walk. Why? The Holy Ghost can't be in you and you'll be stagnant. Your Holy Ghost cannot be in you and you'll be spectating. It's impossible. Check your Holy Spirit. Is it still there? It cannot be in you and you'll not be hard working. You shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and uttermost parts of the world. Therefore, I pray, every force of stagnation shall be broken by the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Our patriarchs of faith were hard working. Abraham, at 75 years, was called to come and start a new assignment. Can you imagine that? Caleb, at 85, said, give me this mountain. Where will you get your own from? If you are not a hard-working person, look at your neighbor and say, I don't want to be disappointed in you. Become hard-working from today. Isaac was diligent. Do you know what it means to dig a well in a dry land? Do you know what it means to keep sowing in a dry land? He was a diligent man. Jacob was diligent. Diligent so much that he worked 14 years to marry a wife. What a man. I mean, do you know what it means to wait seven years to marry somebody? The father said no. 14 years he was so diligent. Working without pay just to marry somebody he loved. That has to be a diligent man. Let me see with my notes. I would have said these days if I would say it. 
these days, when they come and meet a lady, I will marry you. If the lady says, I'm going to pray, after two weeks, they leave. Jacob waited 14 years. Somebody said, that is love. And yet, the father wasn't paying him. How can you, a brother, tell a lady, the Lord told me, I pray, you are my wife. The lady said, okay, let me go and pray. After three weeks, God hasn't spoken to her. And you say, well, maybe God didn't speak. Did you hear God in the first place? Does God change his mind so quickly? And you are the one that said, God told you she's my wife. Let's continue. Listen, there is no affluence in life without diligent input. When you are a civil servant, make sure you are diligent. Because civil service can make you to be pushing paper all the time. Always referring. Referring without solving problems. Idleness is a self-inflicted cause. You will not be idle in Jesus' name. Yeah. Proverbs 22, verse 29 says, Seest thou, Proverbs 22, 29, a man diligent in his business. Look at neighbor, say, in your business. Say it again, in your business. Bible does say be diligent in everybody's business. In your own. When you are hard working at what God has called you to do, Psalm, he says you will stand before kings. You will not stand before me, man. Your promotion shall be rapid in Jesus' name. Your lifting shall be unchallenged in the name of Jesus. The secret is be diligent. Paul says this this way. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10. Apostle Paul. He said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I but the grace of God which was with me. Are you hearing me now? Folks, diligence is a blessing. You shall be blessed in Jesus' name. A prosperous people or church or family are a diligent family. I'm telling you. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 10 and 11. Mind your own business. That's what the Lord is saying. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any will not work, neither should he eat. In other words, you have no right to eat breakfast if you have not worked. Let's, let, let's, 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 let's make it graphic. You see, look at you now, look at you. For we hear that there are some which work among you disorderly, working not at all, but busy bodies. You are the one they are always sowing seed in their life. When will you sow in other people's lives? No, but that's the Bible. Where will you sow in other people's lives? You are the one everybody's always praying for. Let's give Sister X, Brother Y. Why you only? Go to God. Lord, I am tired of being a prayer point. Let me say, I mean, listen. There's no need to wake up in the morning, put on your dressing gown as a man, and be speaking in tongues at 10 a.m. Get out and go and find Joe. I'm serious. 10 a.m., 11 a.m., we're just believing God. No, we have believed God already. Get out of the house. Go and evangelize. That's an assignment. Come to church. Take tracts. That's an assignment. You don't have a job? Come to this building. There is something to do. There's nobody who has ever volunteered in this place. You can't give them two weeks. They will get a job. Hands are up. It has never happened. You can't volunteer in your heart and God not give you something to do. Say, I'm not believing God. At 12 a.m. Meanwhile, you have had breakfast. My friend, stop that nonsense. Any get up at 5 and pray. Get at 6 and pray. But others go to work at 8 and 9. You to get out of the house. Where am I going? God will show you where to go. And when it's 1, take a break also, 1 hour. And then by 5, go back home. You can't do that for 2 weeks. God will remember you. Pick tracks. Don't be... You know people that throw things in houses? Start doing that. If you stay at home without working, you soon realize that your configuration is changing gradually. You begin to add glory to your body without realizing it. Listen to this. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 1, verse 3, it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Who am I talking about here? That bringeth forth his foot when? In this season. His leaf also shall not wither. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. May you become that person in Jesus' name. 
Brethren, I'm still trying to walk this point. Thank God for great ideas. Please hear me. Thank God for big dreams. But please start from where you are. Start somewhere. Stop waiting for the big dreams to manifest. Start where you are. David anointed as king, went back looking after sheep, playing his up. Start from where you are. Says that a man diligent in his business. Joseph had all the dreams. Everybody would bow before him, but sir, he kept remaining a houseboy. Start from where you are. Oh, I know God has shown you. You will preach and fill stadiums up. I know, but please start being faithful in that prayer department. That's why it starts. Start being the best usher you can. That's why it starts. Be diligent. John chapter 5 verse 17. Jesus says, My father walketh either to and I walk. Look at the say, I hope you are walking. Listen, let me the best of our now so that our tomorrow can be guaranteed. Labor is the pathway to greatness. Any lazy man, no lazy man is allowed to be great in life in any currency. No lazy man has a future in any currency. A complaining person will complain everywhere. It doesn't matter why you place them. In America, in Japan, in China, they will still complain. Why? They are used to complaining. But a diligent man will be prosperous. And I pray for you the grace that was on Jesus Christ, that was on Apostle Paul, on Father Abraham, that made them diligent. May you and I receive in Jesus' name. Please hear me and hear me well. Let's be, listen, your color is not an issue. Your race is not the barrier. It is your mind that is holding you back. Songs of Solomon, chapter 5. It's in the Bible. Chapter 1, verse 6. Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 6. He said, look not upon me because I am black. Look at neighbor, say they are talking about you now. He said, because the son I looked upon me, my mother's children were angry with me. Why? They made me the keeper of their own vineyards. Would you read the next statement with me? Let's go. But my... So it is not racism. It's not the English you speak or the one you don't know. It is diligence that is the problem. My own vineyard have I not kept. In other words, you're given a job. You have an assignment. You've signed a contract. It is incumbent upon you to know everything you need to know about that job. So when you're in board meetings, they are talking, you can contribute. You can't be speaking in tongues in the place. It's not a time to speak in tongues. He can rescue you sometime, but please, sir, be diligent. Say, my own vineyard have I not kept. You know, do you know, guys, let's talk a little bit. Do you know why sometimes when we will blame people for looking down on us or messing up with us? Look at us, our surrounding. Look at where you are in church. How filthy, how clean is the place? Think about it. Now, who should come and clean for us? Are we not? Think about what I'm saying. Look at your household. Look at what you are involved in. Am I improving it or reducing it in value? Come on. It's not racism. It's simply diligence. You are given an assignment to wash this flannel. And you don't succeed in washing it. It's because they don't like me at work. They love you. But you haven't done your job. What will make everyone defend you, my brother? You are the one that will come last to work and the first to go. Say, I want to go for fellowship. They won't allow me. No, 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 no. There is give unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Give unto God what is God's. So I give them the, I, I, I don't want to mention nobody's name. But just look and say, what you do in church is can God come and say, well done for this assignment we've given you? Can God say, well done. I'm proud of you for what we gave you to do. So if it is not working, it can't be God. Are you still here? So Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10, therefore, I'll give you loads of scriptures. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10, whatsoever that I find it to do, what do you do? Do it with your might. For there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave without our grace. All of us will go to the grave one day, but you can't walk in the grave. Whatever your hands find to do, may you do it well. I know amen won't be much. I understand. No, it's not, you know, it's not a shouting message. I understand it. That's the honest truth, but we need this. Are you still here with me? Number two, number five, 
Number two for today. Responsibility to your family. Responsibility to your family. I spoke last week about responsibility to your parents. But today, let's talk about our family. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21 to 24, it's explicit. I don't need to preach. Ephesians 5, 5, 21 to 24. It says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. That means, number one, in family, pride must be far. Every time we have pride in family, it's because Satan is dominating. The small child in the family has a point. The older man also has a point. Bible says, submitting yourselves one to another where? In the fear of the Lord. Nobody must dominate the other in family. That's not the, listen, God didn't create any man to dominate another. That's why people fight. Humility is, I submit to you in some areas. You submit to me in some areas. You don't have to have the last say all the time. You don't have to correct everything people do. It's wrong. It's the spirit of pride. You are not always correct. There are some things God may not show you. Submit to yourself one to another. Then, verse 22, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Somebody shall say, La. I don't need to preach on that. Now, Bible didn't say husband, dominate your wives. That's not what he said. He didn't say wives, become rags to your husband. That's not what he said. It is in functionality and role in the family to create harmony that Paul gave these instructions. In terms of leadership and responsibility, somebody must have the final say in terms of leadership. Therefore, wives, submit yourself to your own husbands as unto the Lord. That's the caveat. As who? As what? Unto the Lord. Whatever God will not be pleased with, you are not permitted to submit. Let's defraud our beloved sister, our brother. Are you supposed to submit in that area? But then, Bible says, the church is subject to Christ, so let the wife be to the honest man's in everything. These are our responsibilities. Can we go a little bit further? In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory to Jesus. I'm glad I'm not going there. It says, but if any man or if any provide not for his own, especially for those of his own house, what happened to him? He had denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Now, this is for gentlemen here. And all the men will say amen. amen. They don't like me. All the ladies will say, so shall it be. So shall it be. But I trust these men. They are providing. All the men here are providing. Don't you guys provide? At least encourage me now. All the men here, look at them. They are great providers. I mean, ask any of their wives. They will tell you. They sort it. I mean, guys, don't you sort things out? Ah, God bless you, men, in Jesus' name. You see, because see, some people don't understand these dynamics of life. The Bible says, you can't say you are a child of God. You can't lift up holy hands. You can't say you are a pastor, a priest, a deacon, whatever you are, a pastor, if you don't provide for your household. Many years ago, I taught this sort of thing in church. And one man said, I've lost my job and I'm, I'm an IT specialist. I said, but the Bible says you must provide for your household. You know what he went to do? He went to get a job as a security officer. Why? He must bring something home. Listen, sir. It's a responsibility we have. Don't let God undo your prayers. Working with God is beautiful when you follow the covenant. May I therefore pray for every man under the sound of my voice. The grace to provide, you will never lose in Jesus' name. Creativity to provide, receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know what the scripture is saying? Actually, actually, I'm not sure you're ready for this. If the lady's work is a bonus, is that no, 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 no. You see, don't, don't let's use 21st century to redefine the Bible. Read, if, 
is any provide not what is involved in provision. So if the ladies make effort and we are grateful, what do I call it? A bonus. I pray for all the men that are connected to me who see me as their father. You will never ever need your wife's salary to survive in Jesus' name. That's why some men run from me. But you see, I will take God to task. You said, Lord, you said. Which means, I'm, you must give me something that will maybe provide for my wife and children. He asked to. Why? He said, if any provide not, Lord, I am your child. Where did you see Abraham say, Sarah, go and dig well? Where did you see it? Listen to me. Thank God for civilization. But we cannot undo the word of God. When a man refuses to take his place in his home, he loses responsibility to his family. And there cannot be blessing from God. That, that's, not, that's not the word of God. Am I talking to you? Listen. Submission from wives is a covenant responsibility. The day you see yourself and your husband as, as, as if you like, as rivals, problems start. In leadership, the Lord says the man is the head. And that's all it is. Not because he's smarter, more intelligent, more brilliant than you know. It's just the way God has done it. And God didn't say, wife, submit when he loves you. Submit, that's what he says. God didn't say, husband, love your wives when they submit. No. Can I ask you a question here? How many of us have submitted 100% to Jesus? You know that in submission to Jesus, you submitted perfectly. Does this still not love you? So, how dare you now, my brother, now say, she hasn't submitted well, I won't love her. Scriptures cannot be broken. May the Lord help us. So, Bible now says in 1 Peter chapter 3, am I still with you? 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. Are you there? He said, likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. That means there are some husbands that you may have married as some believers. You now become Christians, your character, your behavior will win them to Christ. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Can I say this to you? If you have in a situation where your husband is not the most spiritual, maybe you guys married as unbelievers, at home let him see be the priest. Don't teach him the Bible. That guy won't like you. I'm just being honest with you. No. He is the leader. Let him say, we are going to pray on this day. You know, you are, I mean you, you and God, you are, I mean, only God and you, you are flowing together. You know every scripture, but he doesn't know. Whatever he says, anyhow, receive it with humility. Let him pray. Or, if he delegates to you, then you pray. But the moment you begin to dominate him, you have not prayed, though. I don't know what kind of man you are. That day you will know the kind of man he is. Because there's something in man that doesn't just like somebody telling them what to do. I know you are more spiritual. The Bible told you with your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the air and of wearing of gold and of putting on apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the art in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is of great price. Now, don't take the scripture out of context. So, people say you must not plat here. You mustn't wear gold. That's not what he's saying. He said, don't let be that which you will use to win your husband. Let it be the ornament of a quiet spirit. Let the inner man be the one talking. In other words, you can do all the makeup, do all the air. If your character is thinking, the guy will see misbehave. That's what the Bible is saying. Come and say, oh man, you're not supposed to plant here. You're not supposed to do wear a ring. I don't, I'm not sure that's what the scripture is saying. Is comparing two things. External decoration and internal decoration. Let the inner man 
be the one that will win the man over. Somebody say amen this morning. He said, for after this manner, in the old time, the only women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection to their own husband. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters you are, as long as you do well, and you are not afraid with amazement. Do you know how Abraham and Sarah functioned? When they got to Egypt, the man said, I'm going to tell them you are my sister. And you're actually my distant cousin, remember? So, and she agreed. And the man saw her, said, She's very beautiful at the age of 78. So, in terms of makeup, she was well made up. Her hair was set, my God. Everything was in order. Her nails were done. Pedicure, manicure. Everything was in place. But she still called the husband, Lord. Why? The inner man was in place. May God work on your inner man. Listen, obedience to covenant blessing, covenant demands rather, we always bring covenant blessings to you. My prayer is that you have covenant blessings. Amen. Proverbs 13, 22, rest one to your family. Proverbs 13, 22. Every good family needs good meal. Your children need to be well fed. Amen. Attend their days at school or sports and all kind of things. They, they need it to pray for them, pray with them. That's our responsibility. Amen. Teach them. Minister the Holy Ghost to them. That's our responsibility. A good man liveth an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Are you seeing that? You minister. Inheritance. That money can't give them. Amen. Number three for today, which is number six. Forgetting the poor. When you forget the poor, everything you're doing may not work the way it's supposed to work. Forgetting the poor. Now, the dilemma is this. Jesus says, the poor you will always have among you. So, some people will be pure. Poor, rather. What makes them poor? I don't know. I don't want to go. I don't want to find out what made them poor. Maybe they don't pay their tithes. Maybe they dishonor God, but they are going to be poor. Maybe there's a cost on their lives. I don't know. Maybe it's a season in their life. But then, the Bible says in Mark 14, 7, for you have the poor with you always. So once you understand that we are going to have the poor always with us, I wish I had time to work this. Even when God gave them commandments in the Old Testament, he told them to provide a city of refuge. So that when people misbehave, they commit a sin, they can run there. He also said there will be a year of jubilee every seven years. Why? So that those who owe money can be pardoned. The 50th year shall be a year of jubilee. He knew that some people by way of life, life they will be poor. But what is your responsibility am I? As you are giving these things special attention. Now listen to this. Bible says... In Psalm 41, I love this scripture. Psalm 41, verse 1 to 3. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. Somebody shout, that is me. Why? The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. He shall be blessed upon the earth. And thou will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. The Lord will make his bed in sickness. Now, can God make your bed and you remain sick? No, but the secret is there. Consider the poor. What am I saying? It doesn't happen usually in England. Things like this, but somebody online may hear this. You have employees and you don't pay them their salary. Or you deduct willy-nilly. Consider the poor. Consider the poor. Job understood this mystery. And he became the greatest man in the whole of the East. He was so wealthy, it was unbelievable. In Job 29, let me read the scripture without preaching so that the Lord can speak to you directly. Job 29, let me read from verse 2 to 13. He was soliloquizing. Job says, he says, oh that our, as in the months past, as in the days when God preserved me, God will preserve you. 
He said, when his candle shined upon my head, when by his light I walked through darkness. Verse 4, everyone shall read together. One, two, go. Secret of God is the maker of men. May God show you his secrets. When the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were about me, verse 6, shall we read together? Then I went out to the gate through the city. When I prepared my seat in the streets, verse 8, your turn. The princes refrained talking and laid the end on their mouth. Your turn, verse 10. When the hair heard me, then it blessed me. May that become your portion. When the eyes saw me, he gave witness to me. May that be your portion. Verse 12, your turn. Verse 12, one, two, go. Don't worry, they'll get there in a minute. One, two, go. Job said, all of my blessings were number one because I had the secrets of God and number two because I delivered the poor that cried and the fatherless and him that had none to help me. I became a helper to them. He said, then the blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me. I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. Brethren, these are little things we can do. To make the widow's heart, do what? Sing for joy. Consider the poor. When we forget them, everyone too may forget us. If you find some sickness in your body, you don't know where it's coming from. Ask yourself, am I still considering the poor? It's a mystery. So Bible puts it this way. In Proverbs 21 verse 13. I see you blessed and lifted. I see your prayers being answered speedily. Who so stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor? What happens to him? He also shall cry himself but shall not be heard. Why are you wasting Pentecostal energy in prayer? The Bible says you will not be heard. You see, May the Lord help us. I don't want to preach on this. I just want to read the scriptures. Listen, Proverbs 21 verse 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. May that not be your portion. Finally, let me give one more scripture. One more point. Disobedience to those above us. Disobedience to those above us. Now, when I talk to those above you, I'm talking of your manager at work who is not of your faith, who practices crazy things, who does all manner of stupid things, who does things that are abominable and detestable, things that you will not do, you must obey them. Why? He writes your appraiser. He is your manager. First Peter chapter 2, 17 to 19. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 4 Peter 2, 17 to 19. Bible says, honor all men. How many men? Talk to me. How many men? What's the next statement? Love the brotherhood. Fear God and honor the king. I know many people don't like the king. You wish Williams was the man. It's too late. Thank God we have a king in the United Kingdom. What's his name? What's his name? King Charles. What shall we do? Honor the king. I know you don't approve of many things about him, but the Bible says do what? Honor the king. And so we have to pray for him. Then servants, be subject to your own masters with all fear. Not only the good and the gentle. Are you seeing that? Not only the nice ones, the nice bosses, but also the wicked, the forward. For this is thankworthy. If a man for conscience toward God endure grief. Would you show me this scripture in NLT, guys? Bring up print that for me. Suffering wrongfully. Bring that in NLT and I want to explain this. Listen, can I say this to you? As you obey those above you at work, don't undo others to build your own career. 
I beg of you. Bible says God is pleased when conscious of his will, you patiently endure unjust treatment. Even when that boss treats you wrongly, God is watching. David, Saul tried to kill David many times, but David still kept honoring the king. You must, you see, you must be conscious of where you are going to learn to behave in the present. Why? The seed you have sown now will be a harvest for tomorrow. Be careful. Don't ever write petition against somebody. Don't be part of them. Why? They will write against you also. It's a matter of time. <laughs> Proverbs 27 verse 18. Whoso keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof. So he that walketh, waiteth on his master shall be honored. I see God honoring you. Learn to wait on your master, on your boss. Learn to obey them. Learn to appreciate them. Listen, learn to make their life easy for them. Solve their problems. Don't make them look bad before higher authorities. Because somebody will make you look bad one day too. Keep a good heart. Make sure you earn your wages. If they pay you 10 to 4, make sure you earn your wages. Make sure you do. You know why? If you are not faithful in another man, nobody will give you all. That's why I'm saying let's dig around. Let's give special attention. You have been praying, Lord, my business, my business. God is saying, but the one I gave you, somebody else is so you haven't done it well. I can't give you yours. Glory to Jesus. If you get to read Luke chapter 16, verse 10 to 12, you say, verse 12, say, if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, somebody else is own, nobody will give what is yours to you. Secret to having your own thing is being faithful in another man's. And you know what? Everyone in life we have to serve one place or the other. Be faithful there. Obey those that are above you. Can I have Ephesians chapter 6 verse 5 to 7? Put it in the NLT version as we conclude. Glory be to God. I pray that as you give special attention, you will see what is wrong. You will make the right amendment. You will get results in Jesus name. He says, slaves, be obey, obey your earthly masters with deep respect and fear. The word slave is the word servant or somebody you are working under. He says, serve them sincerely as you will serve Christ. That is the word. King James says, with fear and trembling, with singleness of heart. Serve well. If this is what they gave you to do, let your mind be on it, sir. Don't skive at work. He says in verse 6, try to please them all the time. Not just when they are watching you. As slaves of Christ, do the will of God with your heart. King James says, not with eye service as men pleasers. Verse 7 now. Verse 7 says, we walk out. Come on, let's do it together, everybody. Let's go. Help me. Shout it again. One more time. And that's in all spheres. Not just in church. Not just your department in church. Walk with enthusiasm as though you are working for the Lord rather than for the people. Jesus knew that they would maltreat us. But he said, but this is the way I want them to know my children. Your future shall be great. Your tomorrow shall be alright. You will excel in life. You will not be held bound. You will not be held back. In the mighty name of Jesus, wisdom will flow through you. I could go on a number. Let's stay on this for today. We'll continue next week. Listen, with sincerity. The day you think you're no longer interested in that job, resign and move on. Singleness of heart. Folks, I'm, t I'm talking of secular job, not even church work. How much more church work? Think about it. So they gave you a job to play drum. And you say you will play drum. And you abandon the drumming. Ah. And you say, I'm praying. Which prayer? Read the scripture. Jeremiah chapter 48 verse 10. Cause be that do the work of the Lord deceitfully. Better to say than you don't. Listen to me. I know some people say, but you could be nicer. I'm trying to be, but it's just my personality. That's why I'm confessing to you. 
guys, scriptures cannot be broken. May the Lord bless you. I say, may the Lord keep you. Did you get something this morning? Did it mess you up a little bit? All right. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, thank you. Isaiah 48 verse 18, and we shall pray on this. Would you like to rise, please? So that you can stretch your leg a bit. Isaiah chapter 48 verse 18. Oh, thank you, Lord. Can we read it together, everyone? This is a statement of regret from God that if only they are listening to me, their breakthrough would have been seen by all. Just one prayer point. Lord, help me to hack into your instruction. That's all it is. Now, Pentecostals are known for miracles. They are known for talking in tongues and for noise making. Let your prayer be loud and clear. One minute only. And I'm out of your way. Lord, the grace to obey you, oh God. Help me to act in diligently to your voice. In the precious name of Jesus. Lord, help me to act in diligently, diligently to your voice to obey you at all times. At all times. At all times. In the name of Jesus. Lord, help me to obey you. Help me to act in unto you. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Help me to obey you, oh God. Help me to obey you, O oh God. Help me to obey you, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Say after me, Lord, help me. I've heard your word. I've heard your voice. Help me to act in diligently and to obey you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Would you look at people and say, you know what to do now? Go and do it. Go and